recently, as has been on all our screens, we see that fire has come into Gaza and difficulty, hardship, and in the ashes, amidst the debris, against everyone's expectations, gold started to shine out of Gaza. I refer to these golden characteristics, which had become so rare, if non-existent, amidst humankind. So, for example, faith. We saw footage of fathers holding their innocent, lifeless babies in their hands. And although you would have anticipated that the correct thing or the appropriate thing would be for the father to say, you know, why me and, oh God, why this innocent child? Instead, you see these golden traits, these super characteristics come out from them with holding a lifeless baby and you know, all the pain that a father feels at losing a baby. And yet he is able to turn to God and say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to God. Faith that you would only find in books is now being embodied amidst the debris and the dust and the ashes of, of Gaza. So I say, gold is discovered in Gaza. And I saw a father, again, a lifeless baby in his hand, and he calls out, O oh Lord, take from us until you're pleased. Notice the submission, notice the surrender, notice the acceptance of destiny, that this is what has happened instead of going to huge emotional problems that you could expect and anticipate in any other person and in, in, in any other situation. Um, here's another golden value, courage. So I saw young girls, primary school girls, able to stand face to face, eye to eye, with an occupying soldier with weapons and guns and everything else by his side. And you see no iota of fear in her eye and she is able to defend her position and her parents and the rest of it. And that is just that the child and it doesn't diminish as it goes up the courage that the Ghazans exhibited in this genocide that they're experiencing is what movies will be made about and poetry written about and what superheroes will be named after that these have Ghazan qualities. And then we saw resilience. Um, currently 1.9 million people are homeless and you would think that they would be defeated in a defeatist mentality will take over. Instead, I heard a young child say, it's okay, we will build it even better than it used to be. So when fire came to Gaza, fitna, uh, the test of fire to separate purity from impurity, to separate gold from impurity, Gaza started to glitter amidst the rubble and the debris and the ashes of Gaza. And you should ask, and it would be appropriate too, but hold on, and what about the impurities and what about the lowliness of conduct? Where did that go? It's everywhere. Anyone that was okay with children being killed exhibited the lowest of human values and started to become uh, unmasked and uncovered and naked and their cruelty and hatred and the smallness of their hearts. And whether that was um, in the hallways of power with their shining suits and, um, you know, long titles of prime minister and president and minister and this and that, and you couldn't stop a genocide and the killing of babies. Uh, forgive me, you exhibited very low qualities. The world put you in positions of authority so that you could lead. 
and when it came time to lead, you faltered, you didn't have principle or spine or courage or resolve or faith, and instead you left 9,000 children to be slaughtered and burnt and buried under the rubbles of Gaza. So congratulations to the people of Gaza, glad tidings to the people of Gaza, glad tidings to the superheroes of our time, to those that showed us values we thought had been extinct, and commiserations to those who couldn't show any. Assalamu alaikum.